Praise God, dear heart. This is Evangelist King, pastor at House Shalom, where we build in a peaceful house for God's glory. <clears throat> I just want to briefly talk on haunted houses, haunted communities. You know, I have been receiving a lot of emails from individuals who the Lord have set free from demons living in their mind, their will, and emotions and body. But their house or even their community may be haunted. And because of that, demons continuously torment them. Torment them so long that they will begin to believe those demons and thinking that maybe the demons are in them. And what happens? Unbelief and doubt opens the door for demons to come right back into God's house, which is the mind, the will, the emotions, and the body. Do you what we need to realize, according to the word of God, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 1, it warns us in saying, but know this, that in the last days, perilous, irreconcilable times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Now dear heart, if the Lord warned us from such people to turn away, it also is telling us to turn away from such houses and communities. Because, because again, because of the choices of a person or the people in which they have rejected God, then demon spirits live in their mind, their will, and emotions, in their body, and they, they do all manner of all manner and sorts of evil. So if demons are in them, therefore demons would be in their dwelling, their physical dwelling places and also the community. Because sin is increasing upon this earth, individuals are rejecting God, they are serving devil, and they knowingly are serving devils. They even have temples and altars of evil worship in their home. They, they also watches paranormal uh, shows, all sorts of paranormal psychic shows. So in other words, by doing so, not only is their physical body and their soul is infested with them, but their house is infested and also community. You know, when it comes down to the community, devils group together in a community. Whatever their belief, like for instance, I'm in, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, but my daughter had a temporary assignment in which she had to work, work temporary for this uh, company that sell nice mobile homes. Well, she told me that there is a community in which a certain race of people uh, buy mobile homes and that's where they group together and and their God is not God Almighty but they are pagan gods because when they buy these mobile homes they make sure that it's facing the east so don't you know that that whole community is infested with demons again dear heart when we decide to purchase a home or even rent a home we first we need to inquire of the Holy Spirit about the previous occupants of that home because that home and also even the land the home the land and the community could be infested with demons and when you move in such homes and such community you you will feel that spiritual battle because demons don't want you there and if you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus and know that Jesus is the one who put you in that location and don't know who you are in Christ Jesus 
Though demons will torment you so bad that they will wear your shield of faith down. And, and when they wear your shield of faith down, you start doing foolish things. Unbelief and doubt has you to do foolish things. Like, for instance, I receive a message where this person tried to make peace with demons, thinking that it'll cause them to stop their torments. That's ridiculous, dear heart. By doing so, all this person did was let those demons back into God's house, which is back into their mind, will, emotions, also in their body. But God, again, dear heart, is war warning us about the perilous times. The perilous times. It is so bad that even the places where one may live and also the community are demon infested. You know, I can share this with you because I have gone through that. You know, we we live first of all when I was a little girl. Let's let's get with the I'm gonna share, share with you my experience on on um um communities that are infested with demons. When I was a little girl I used to hear all sorts of things at night, especially on the street, like a horse would galloping up and down the street. And when I looked, nobody was out there. And then I was taking uh, see dark shadow. And, and uh, as a little girl, I knew it was a human spirit. Didn't know nothing about a human spirit, but I knew it was a human spirit. And also we used to hear noises, different noises when we played. And when I got older in the Lord and I asked the Lord about it, he told me that in my community, everybody was involved in witchcraft. Everybody had taken witchcraft, went to the, the root, root workers. It's another word that he used for witch doctor. But in the South, in the United States, in, in the Southern country, they call it roots, a root worker. That's a witchcraft worker. He said everybody had went to the root worker, the witchcraft worker, and got their incantations, and they were taken buried it under the ground. So he said that whole community, when I was a little girl, were, were involved in witchcraft. So that whole community was infested with demonic spirits. That's the reason why, when I was a little girl, I would often hear certain people had done died, because those spirits would end up killing them. Okay, so that's my experience in living in a community that was uh, infested with demons. And when I got around 12 or 13, we moved from that community, and I never heard such, a, uh, such things since then. Now, also, I lived in a, in a couple of haunted houses. Of course, when I was a little girl, you know, uh, we, we lived in a haunted house because of the previous owner was involved in witchcraft, and... And, and, and the head of, of the house that I was living in was involved in witchcraft. Uh, but then when I got older, uh, I lived um, in this house. And, uh, and it had uh, manifestation of demons. And I asked the Lord about it. And praise God, God had raised me at that point to know who I am in Christ Jesus. So, so I asked the Lord, uh, what can I do to get rid of them? And the Lord told me, he said, since you're not the owner of this house, you don't have legal right to tell them to leave, but you can, you can draw a circle around your property, around the, the place that was given to you, and the spirit draw a circle around that, and that spirit cannot come over that, and that's what I did, you know, and uh, so after we moved from that house, uh, then I never experienced that again. So dear heart, I'm sharing this with you, again. Because I get so many emails from people who think they are demonized all because their house or their community is, is demonized. Dear heart, God have delivered you. I'm talking to those that God have delivered. Now some of you God have not delivered. So you, you, you are experiencing an inward and an outward battle. But I'm talking about talking to these who have been delivered. Where that battle is not on the inside. Demons are not living in them no longer because they have been thrown out. But they still experiencing this outward battle. That's because the house that you live in and or the community that you live in are demonized. And you feeling you feeling that battle. So you don't have to give in to those demons. If you're not don't feel strong in your faith to stay in. And battling that battle in that haunted house or in that haunted community, it's best to get out. It's best to get out, dear heart. 
It's best that you get out than to lose your trust, your faith in God. Because if they wear down your shield of faith, they're going back into God's house, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, and your body. Again, you know, due to the sins of people, you'd be surprised at what people do in their home, the evil acts that they do. And demons have a tendency to linger and stay where, where there have been traumatic circumstances, terrible things that happen. When people offer them a worship, do certain things to, to, to give them worship, they squat. They squat in that house. They squat on that land. They squat in that community. And you, the child of God, when you purchase, uh, rent, or buy such a house and live in such a community, you're going to feel that, that outward battle. And again, you've been delivered. That don't mean that those demons are in you. So if you, you live in such haunted houses, a haunted community, and you say, well, I'm tired of this battle, but then you just need to move. You just need to move. You need to trust God and move. The devil tell you, well, you can't afford to move. You can't move. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want. Don't you know I'd rather move than, than to sit there and keep battling with the devil like that and he wearing down my shield of faith. And by him wearing down my shield of faith, he going to jump into me. To avoid that, I, I, I'm moving. I'm moving. But again, you know, if, if, if you're strong enough to stay, you stay. You stay. But if you're not, it's best for you to move. Well, if not, the devils are aiming to bat to wear down your shield of faith. So remember, we are living in the last days. Perilous times. Perilous times has come. I'm telling you, perilous times have come. So I just wanted to share this with you, especially those of you who who going through that outward battle and, and Satan is just about have, have just about wore down your shield of faith and that you're thinking you're not delivered because you're going through this battle, this outward battle. Dear heart, do you not know we always going to have this outward battle? This outward battle is a battle against Satan. As long again, that battle is not on the inside. Devils are not living on the inside of you. You're good to go. You're all right. You can stand. You just need to stand in your most holy faith. And then, but again, if you're in such haunted houses and haunted communities and you feel like that you just can't stand, it's best to move. You know, I, I heard a testimony of Dr. Lester Sunrall uh, uh, that he was telling us as it was told to him from a man of God. Um, I think this man was living in England. I'm not for sure. But uh, he had three daughters that had moved into this house. He had three daughters. Well, he assigned all three of his daughters' room. So that very first night, uh, one daughter um, slept. And she got up the next morning and she said, Daddy, I need to get out of that room. Daddy, I can't stay in that room. Daddy, if, if I stay another night in that room, I would die. Well, the daddy didn't take her seriously. He thought it was a joke. He said, oh, nothing wrong with that room. Just go on and sleep. So that second night, she, she, she slept. And the next morning, he found his first daughter dead. She, was, she died. She died. So he, they buried her and everything. So he gave the same room to his second daughter. So she went, she went to bed that night. And they woke up the next morning. And she said, daddy, I can't. I can't sleep in that room. Dad, I just can't sleep in the room. Said, and the daddy said, well, I know your sister died and, and she with the Lord and everything is okay. You can sleep in that room. She said, no, Dad, if I sleep in that room again, I would die. Again, he thought it was a joke and told her to go ahead and sleep in the room. Well, the next morning, woke up, his second daughter was dead. Now, after the second daughter did, it's like it, he came to his attention. So he sent for the man of God. And he told the man of God what had happened. So the man of God told him, said, look, you have two choices. You either can command that spirit to get out, or it's just best for you to move out. Because you only got one daughter left. Because he was afraid that he may lose his last daughter. So the man knew that he, he did not have the faith to kick that spirit out, demon spirit out. 
So he, he packed up and he moved. And therefore he saved his third daughter. So what, what happened was something traumatic happened in that house in which that demon of death lingered there. So more likely that someone had committed suicide in that house. And that, 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 demon, that demon spirit was lingering there. It had legal right to linger there. So, dear heart, again, you know, if you're in a haunted house, you're in a haunted community, you know, you go to bed at night. You might not be in a haunted house, but the community is haunted. And when you go to bed at night, you hear all manner of noises outside. And, and outside, and then you notice that you start seeing dark figures coming into your room. They are peeping spirits, spirits that is peeping, peeping at you, dear heart. And, and that, that don't give you peace. It, it, it gives you fear. God don't give you the spirit of fear. So, so again, you know, we don't have to carry ourselves to such torment and abuse. You know, again, if you're not strong enough to, to deal with it in the Lord, then it's best to, to move out. You know, there was a time where I used to love my husband take me to my favorite Chinese restaurant. But I noticed that even when I got in the parking lot, I would start getting sick, get very dizzy and sickly. Just couldn't understand it. And then, but we would go on in inside and we would eat. And around the third or fourth time, I really thought about it. Why every time I come here in the parking, even in the parking lot, I would start getting dizzy. And Lord answered me. He said, Terry, when you enter that, that Chinese restaurant, what do they have displayed to let everybody see? I said, oh, they have their Buddha God sitting up there. He said, well, they dedicated that restaurant to their God. And that's the, that's the effect or the warfare that in an attack that you feel when you even get in the parking lot. I said, Lord, forgive me. I would not go back there again. Never went back there again, dear heart. So yes, dear heart, there are haunted houses and haunted community. That restaurant is infested with demons. Even if, if the owners of that restaurant decide to leave and find another place, well, whoever else rent or buy that restaurant, they're also going to receive the demons that are squatting there. Because that place is infested with demons because they've been dedica de dedicated to, to devils. So do you know, a lot of people, a lot of God children don't believe these things will happen. But they, they are happening. You know what? You may not believe it happened. But when it happens to you, you will believe. You will believe. So dear heart, again... If you're not spiritually mature enough to come against those spirits in, in, your, in that haunted house or haunted community, then it's best that you get out. Get out. And, and inquire the Holy Spirit as to where He desire and want to send you. Praise the living God. And remember, keep your trust, your faith in God because He protects us even when we don't think we need protection. Thank him for his, his tender mercies and his loving grace and peace that he gives us within ourselves that passes all understanding. Remember dear heart now for those of you who may be listening and you say wow I need to be delivered from this inward battle that is raging on the inside of me. That means you know devils are living in your mind, your will, emotion, and body and how you know because of your actions and your reactions dictate to you who's living on the inside of you. The Lord said, by their feet, you should know them. If you're always angry, you're already angry. So it tells you that, it shows you that, that ang the one who is angry lives in you. And you need to be delivered. So I host call-in deliverance sessions only on Wednesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And just go to my website, howshalons.org slash deliverance. And it'll show you details on how you can call in for a deliverance session. All sessions are free. They are public. And dear heart, yes, they are recorded. And they are shared on all our programs. 
So as you agree to those terms, you can feel free to call to get your deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Because dear Lord, Jesus is soon to come. He's soon to come. When he comes, he's looking for a house without spot and without blemish. No darkness going to be in us, in our mind, will, in emotion, or body. No darkness. Only his spirit will have our total being in Jesus' mighty name. So dear heart, keep looking up to Christ Jesus from where all our help and our strength come Praise his name continually, all day, every day. Shalom.